Hello, I'm Richard Murphy. And I want to answer a question that's been raised today. The question was raised on the video we did on modern monetary theory. And that question is, why do we need a national debt if modern monetary theory says the government doesn't have to borrow? And that's an absolutely excellent question, fundamental to understanding the economy. Well, first of all, we have to understand what the national debt is. The national debt is something that people are paranoid about. You know, you will have television journalists say, oh, the national debt is a burden on us and it's going to crush the next generation. Well, let me show you what the national debt looks like. I like doing this. You've seen it before in this video series. There you are. That's the national debt. If you don't want your money, please send it to me in an envelope and I'll happily take it from you because 80 billion, near enough of the national debt right now, it looks like this, it's cash. Because of course, that's the government's promise to pay you. It's a debt. And that is literally in the figure of two plus trillion pounds that is the supposed UK national debt right now. What else is in it? There's about 170 billion pounds is in national savings and investments. What is that? Well, premium bonds is part of that. They've been going for ooh, 60, 70 years, I think. And people like them. They save in them. And the rest is national savings accounts, which are particularly popular with older people in the UK, but open to anyone. You can save with the government and get quite a decent interest rate, by the way. That's a bit of investment advice on the side. That is classically what the national debt is. It's saving with the government. What's the rest of it? Well, most of it is what are called gilts. Gilts are government bonds. It's packaging up the amount of money that the government has spent into the economy, but not reclaimed by tax, and selling it, in effect, to banks, pension funds, life assurance funds, oh, and foreign governments they own around 400 billion pounds of UK national debt. Why do people want to own this national debt? Well, the reasons are different. You want cash because it's useful. If we didn't have a national debt, there would be none of this. It's an interesting idea. But if we want the economy to work, we have to have a national debt. Why else do people want it? Because the government is the safest place to save with. That's why national savings and investments is so popular. You can't get a safer place for your money. Why do pension funds want it? Well, they want to guarantee that private pensioners will be paid out for the rest of their life. If I retire in a few years time and might live actuarially for maybe 20 years after my retirement age, my pension wants to guarantee it can pay me throughout that time. So it puts my pension fund into government bonds because they're guaranteed to pay out over the rest of my life. Most private pension funds include government debt as the guarantee of payment for pensioners. So get rid of the government's debt and private pensions would be in jeopardy in this country. Very few people point that out to you. What else is it used for? Well, the banking sector needs it really very badly because when you put money in a bank, you enjoy the benefit of a government guarantee. The first £85,000 that you've got in any bank account, if you're so lucky, is guaranteed by the government. It's safe whatever happens, even if the bank fails. But suppose you're a large company that wants to put a billion pounds in the bank. Yeah, and large companies do want to put billions of pounds in the bank. How do they do that safely? Well, they can't, there's no guarantee. So instead, they buy bonds to save with. And if they're borrowing very short term, they bond, buy bonds from a bank in the afternoon and sell them back again the following morning to the bank. And a tiny price difference is the interest they're paid. It's called the repo market. I won't go into the details, but government bonds are fundamental to this aspect of the operation of the City of London and the financing of UK companies. How and why do foreign governments hold government debt? Well, to keep trade going, governments need to hold balances in each other's currencies. So the UK government holds some dollars, it holds euros, it holds yen, it holds Australian dollars, and so on. 
And how do they hold those balances which they need to make sure that flows of funds between the different countries can take place? They own the debt of the other countries. That's how they do it. So again, it's fundamental to international trade that we have a national debt. So where's the problem with this national debt that is apparently going to oppress our future generations? Well, there isn't one. The national debt is private wealth, and that's what we forget. And we've known that for a really long time. I'd ask you to go and read a novel to explain this. The novel is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. In Pride and Prejudice, Mrs. Bennet was able to appraise the value of her potential son-in-laws by how much they had invested in what were called the 4%. The 4% in 1810 were government debt. And she thought owning government debt was the sign of a good son-in-law. Well, she was right, because they were wealthy. Far from government debt being something that is going to oppress our grandchildren, Actually, the lucky ones will inherit it, and they will be rich. The difficulty is that not everyone will inherit it, not that nobody will. We want the national debt. It helps our economy go round. So let's not be in crisis about it, but let's realise that the, the government creates it, not because it has to, modern monetary theory says it doesn't, but because people want it, and it serves a valuable economic function that at the moment we don't know how to do without. I hope that makes this issue clearer. We'll come back to it, I'm sure, in other videos in due course. If you're interested in this video series, please push the subscribe button underneath this video. And as a result, you'll get updates when we publish further videos in the future. Follow me on Twitter at Richard J. Murphy. See my blog, Tax Research UK. I'm Richard Murphy. Thanks for watching.